Welcome to the tech section of this FinTech webinar series. Anyone can grasp at a high level technical concepts important in our high tech world today. We're going to align on two of them, the cloud and application programming interfaces or APIs. This will line us up to learn about three FinTech models for the future, banking as a service, open banking, and platform banking. We will start with the cloud because we hear about the cloud all the time. But like so many concepts in programming, the actual tech behind the name has been abstracted away from us to the point that we actually motion upward when we talk about it. We can thank CDN provider and really cool company Cloudflare for the very straightforward definition. The cloud refers to servers, which are just computers that only process requests from client computers that are accessed over the internet and the software and databases that run on those servers. Cloud servers are located in physical data centers all over the world. So they're here on earth, not up in the sky. And by using cloud computing, users and companies don't have to manage physical servers themselves or run software applications on their own machines. Now, in the old days, companies would have to invest a ton of capital in servers and storage space. Now they can essentially lease all of their infrastructure and security from a cloud provider like Google Cloud and Amazon Web Services, which saves them tons of cash. Cloud computing really took off at the same time of the 2008 financial crisis and absolutely laid the grounds for fintech. Bootstrapped companies could have more idea, less investment to actually get their ideas off the ground and out in the app stores. If there is one thing that you take away from this webinar series, it's the concept of an application programming interface, aka an API. And in tech, APIs are everything. The textbook definition is that an API is a set of tools, definitions, and protocols for integrating software application and services. But before we get into the details of APIs, again, let's just step back and check in that we're all aligned on how the internet actually works. So as we were just discussing with the cloud, there are large physical data centers loaded, located all across the world that are housing these huge networked collections of interconnected servers. Every page on the internet is stored on a server somewhere in the world. So for example, when you type www.elvest.com into your Chrome browser, a request goes out to LVS remote server in a data center. The server returns a response, the browser interprets the code and displays the web page LVS.com. An API is the code that governs access points to the server that can access the database, receive requests and respond with data. Whether it's passing data back and forth between an internet browser and a server, or passing data between two software applications. APIs essentially call each other for data, zap it up and pass it on over to the other one without constantly needing for new lines of communication. And if you've never used APIs before, you've certainly interacted with them. Public APIs are freely open for anyone to use. Large social media companies were really pioneers in the public API space. And many rely on public APIs to drive their business as they give third-party developers the tools to make their own apps and integrations. You're probably familiar with these. Google Maps public API can be pulled into all sorts of applications to show you your geolocation. Uber originally used the Google Maps API instead of building their own map to show riders and drivers where each other's were. Twitter's API allows for companies to embed relevant tweets on their web page. So whenever you go to a web page where you see their Twitter feed, they're using Twitter's API. And in the tech world, and especially in the fintech world, APIs are crucial because they create or extend new revenue channels through integrations and therefore expand a brand's reach through that visibility and integration into another service um, and ultimately contribute to the open inter innovation that we need so much as the basis of the internet. All right, great. So now that you're all cloud and API experts, we're gonna move on to some more techie stuff. So APIs are very important to understand at a base level because as we talk about the different B2B FinTech models that are behind a lot of the continued innovation we're going to be seeing from big banks and challengers and disruptors alike. 
Um, Solaris Bank is a German banking as a service company whose article I've used in this webinar to break down the three different models we're going to talk about. And we'll start with just that banking as a service. And to explain what this is, we are going to look at an example. So let's say you run an e-commerce furniture company and COVID has taken a huge hit on your sales. Wouldn't it be great if you could offer customers a loan through your furniture company instead of needing them to interrupt their purchase experience and go take out a loan at the bank? If you could offer them this loan, all of a sudden you've got access to more customer data that might uh, inform future offers or sales and increase customer loyalty as now they've got at least two products with you, a couch and a loan. In the old days, this would have been impossible. As a furniture company, you'd have to go out and get a whole government-issued banking license, set up a whole compliance infrastructure, and more. So this is where banking as a service comes in. Banking as a service companies are licensed, fully compliant, regulated banks that lend their banking services, issuing credit cards, opening accounts, doing background checks on customers, to non-banks via API. So. When someone, for example, applies for a furniture store loan on the furniture website, the furniture store is really just communicating with the bank's server APIs and webhooks and otherwise really just existing as an interface. That's why banking as a service is commonly known as white label banking. So really banking as a service just allows a non-bank to do banking things without needing to become a bank. For non-banks, this is awesome. This means opening up new revenue streams and offering better or more innovative customer experiences. Next up is open banking, which you will undoubtedly hear a ton about in the upcoming and near future. So open banking also involves banks connecting to non-banks via API. However, the aim is different than that of banking as a service. Instead of allowing a non-bank to integrate banking services into a product, uh, open banking simply allows non-bank businesses to use a bank's data for their products. So as we said earlier, personal finance apps are using open banking to get the data from all your different checking and savings and investment accounts and display it to you in their nice designy interface. Um, behind that interface, there are the pipes providers like Plaid and Yolt who build and maintain the APIs that connect Mint to your bank under this umbrella of open banking. In Europe, they've just made it mandatory for banks to open up their data to third parties, uh, and industry experts expect to see this trend emerge in other countries as well. The last fintech model we'll talk about in this series is platform banking, or banking as a platform. Um, banking as a platform is almost the inverse of banking as a service. So banking as a platform refers to a bank integrating services from other fintechs into their own bank products, or building their own APIs for their customers. Historically, banks have offered all financial services under the sun, while fintechs, as we know, generally developed with a focus on one thing and a better customer experience. So banking as a platform ultimately allows banks to get on this bandwagon of innovation and bring cool new fintech stuff into their own product mix and increase their reach through partnerships. So this could be something like uh, Charles Schwab bringing on a really cool new fintech robo-advisor uh, and putting it into their banking products. As another example, the Development Bank of Singapore has the largest API offerings in the world and they've developed this in recent years. Um, what do they do with this? Well, they cite a corporate customer of theirs, a, a large rubber seller, who's using their API to create an online marketplace where farmers, rubber producers, and tire manufacturers can transact and track real-time prices and supply information. So that brings us to the end of the tech. We've talked about the cloud, we've talked about APIs, and how the cloud and APIs are really important in understanding the fintech models for the future, banking as a service, open banking, and platform banking, and really looking at the infrastructure that is behind the scenes of all this cool stuff going on in fintech. So next up, we'll talk opportunities.